Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Brandon. Welcome to Audio Addiction Rank. Finally, it's album reviews. You can find our band reviews and you can find live coverage of the concerts that we get. Um, I'll be posting a ton of album reviews coming up Body Thief, Sauce, um, Felicity, a few more here and there uh, that I get around to. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, also, did album reviews. I uh, did a live album review of Amorosis newest record, Peach Club. I uh, also did an album review of August Burns Red, Phantom Sessions. And then shout outs to the homies and Sentinels. They released the newest record. Uh, so definitely go check them out um, on Unsound Recollections. Go give them a listen uh, and go check out my review if you get the chance to, uh, which it would really be awesome. Interviews going out Mondays and Fridays now. Um, getting live sets organized, and they should be going out very soon as well. So definitely keep your eyes peeled. Uh, I have plenty of awesome stuff to be coming in this month and into the following months uh, that precede that. So, but tonight we're going to be talking about Crystal Lake's newest record, Helix. So I've been a fan of this band for a very long time. I did a review of their a few of their records uh, more recently, True North, their most recent record uh, back in 2016. But I actually found out about the band in 2014 with their uh, EP Cubes. Uh, and then I followed them along with their uh, record that was in between True North and Cubes, which is The Sign, and that was released in 2015. I have felt like this band has been underrated for many, many years. And it's finally cool that they are signed to Shark tone record so definitely check them out i know that this album had released in japan uh, i believe black back in november um but it comes to the states in uh february of next week so definitely go check out this band uh if you're interested they are currently on tour of fit for a king um miss may i uh and august burns red ironically enough so go give them a listen and if they're in the states and you haven't seen them yet go see them but Tonight, I'm going to go through each track, give you my thoughts and opinions on the whole record, uh, go through some pros and cons, and then finish it out with an overall rating. So the first track is called Helix, the title track of the record. It's this cool little robotic uh, voice sounding intro. I feel like the music video definitely definitely emulates uh, that a little bit better because they kind of combine Helix and Aeon together, which is totally cool. Um, I think it is a little bit more reflective of what they're going for, but um, overall kind of keeping with that sort of electronic feel and, and I like that so we're gonna move into track number two which is Aeon this one features AJ uh, from Issues and this was the second single that they had released it is one of my favorites um even when I st first listened to it, I just knew it was just a hot track, and I knew I was going to love it. Um, it starts off right away, obviously leaving no room for you to kind of catch your breath at the beginning. But I have to say that um, one of the uh, one of my favorite uh, kind of things in this track is the drumming. I think just the uh, incredible range of, uh, of his drumming abilities, not only uh, around the kit, but also with uh, his feet. Uh, there's some awesome blast beat parts and just some kind of like... Um, I, I'm not very good with the drum tech, te uh, <laughs> terminology, but um, it's kind of got this sort of drum roll uh, sort of effect to it, and it's just nuts. Um, the layering of uh, Rio's screams are really cool. I think they accentuate the brutality of the song and just his screaming prowess in general as well. Um, AJ comes in at around the 1 minutes and 25 second mark and ends at around the 1 minutes and 47 seconds. Uh, second mark and I like that he harmonizes with Rio I think it is a great feature um, I think this is how all features should go if they're going to be on the heavier side um, I think they were able to utilize him uh, well I also feel like he had a long enough feature as well too so um, I think it's just a combination of of those two things i think it's a mental track it's a great opener to the record and i feel like if you enjoy this one i i feel like you'll enjoy primarily the rest of the record so we're gonna move into track number three which is agony this one is another favorite of mine uh i like that this one kind of continues on with what helix was doing which has you know more like electronic pieces obviously helix is just an intro portion but i feel like 
the the rules kind of remain the same uh there's some really awesome electronic undertones in this track um just the faint uh sort of female vocals that are uh sprinkled and kind of layered throughout not only this song but uh, a couple songs off the record really kind of add this nice layering piece and i think it's also a great contrast to the screaming going on as well um i think this one finds a great balance of melody as well as heaviness uh that i feel like a lot of the record represents but i think that this song does it in the best way possible uh i love the drop at around the two minutes and five second mark to around the two minutes and 18 second mark i think it's super under expected and every time uh i listen to this song it it still gets me to this to this time and i've listened to this record many many times up to this point um the bridge is probably the coolest part um and i love that there's a little bit of um only clean singing parts um, on this track. There are some songs that have a little bit of clean singing, um, but I think that this one does a very good job of that as well. So we're going to move into track number four, which is plus 81. This is another favorite of mine. Um, this one grooves. I love it. I think it has a really unique swing to it, but also kind of along keeping with agony i think it keeps the proper amount of heaviness um but i think what it does better than agony is that chorus it's super infectious again coming back with this sort of clean singing on this one as well um but you know don't be remiss this track is a crystal lake track so you know you gotta bang your head a little bit on this one uh there's this cool little break at around the one minutes and 43 second mark to around the two minutes and 10 second mark um i think it's a nice little bass piece that um I feel like gets a little bit of love here and there, um, and I think it's a nice breakup. It definitely reminds me of something that was off of uh, True North, uh, where they kind of experimented a little bit more and kind of had that sort of funk. Uh, I think this one definitely plays into that, um, but I love how it transitions back into the sort of heaviness of the song. Um, I think it is obviously shows their songwriting ability as well as whoever did the production for them um, kind of had that sort of ear for it. So. Uh, uh, definitely a cool moment in this track definitely one of the better ones probably in my top uh, five off this record without a doubt so we're gonna move into track number five which is lost and forever and this one features dan and tyler from gideon one of my personal favorite bands they release this one probably the most recently um but it is also one of my favorites as well this one kind of focuses more on that sort of hardcore flavor um if you are a fan of gideon i feel like you'll enjoy this track um a lot because i feel like they do a great justice to it um but obviously has to start off with that quintessential sort of punk beat which is definitely Definitely, you know, uh, akin to hardcore music. Uh, I like the gang vocals in the chorus as well. I really like it. It really accentuates the fullness of the song as well. Um, and then the um, Dan and Tyler come in at the two minute and two second mark to around the two minutes and 53 second mark. Uh, respectfully, I think that Tyler's uh, screaming and singing are really phenomenal in this track. Uh, obviously, Dan's vocals, if you're a fan of Gideon, you know his vocals are super good. And uh, just the combination of both of them doing it together was really awesome. I like how they play off of each other, much how they play off of each other in Gideon as well. Um, and I, I also like that Ryu kind of threw in his own screaming as well i thought that was really awesome but the uh, i think the nice ending portion of the song is the last chorus that features more female vocals um and i think it offers a nice contrast to sort of the more heavier more aggressive vibes uh of this track so we're gonna move into track number six which is outgrow uh this one is one of the more unique tracks off the record i don't think it is the worst one there is one that i think is just a little bit worse than that or maybe one that i just quite didn't get um but the vocal layering at the beginning of the track is on point uh the star song starts off slow and kind of builds up a little bit and kind of plateaus at certain points but at the um second half of the song i uh, really kind of gets back into familiar territory gets a little bit heavier it gets a little bit more gritty uh stuff that you expect from crystal lake at this point um one of their more exp experimental tracks uh a track that i feel like i would have heard on true north uh much like 81 but i feel like 81 plus 81 did a better job of executing that um but this one definitely i feel like could have i could have heard on um 
uh, True North without a doubt. So we're going to move it into track number seven, which is Ritual. Um, this is a cool little chant track that leads into a monster of a track, which is track number eight, which is called Hail to the Fire. This one's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite tracks off the record. Um, it's one that they haven't released yet, and I hope that they don't because it is so heavy and i'm excited for people to listen to it uh the guitar riff on this track absolutely grooves i know that i talk a lot about the drumming i try talk a lot about the vocals but i feel like the guitar parts in this song really shine i like the callbacks to ritual the uh in the chanting portion of the song as well uh and there's this cool little tempo change at um the 55 second mark that i feel like almost feels like as if Ritual had gone, it stops at the 55 second mark and then Hail to the Fire kind of begins at that point. But it's a really kind of cool part that I feel like a lot of people will pick out um, just because it feels so abrupt and it's really cool. Um, Rio screaming is on point without a doubt. I think that if I hadn't said it in the last review or anything else, um, I feel like he's one of the most uh, one of the best up and coming screamers that most people haven't heard of yet and you should definitely do your homework and check out this band because the screaming on this track is absolutely phenomenal and the screaming just in general in this band is really good um easily one of the heaviest tracks off the records i feel like uh just the added benefit of darker under overtones in this track um really make that the song kind of at the heaviest point but let me just tell you the two minutes in four second mark to the end of the track i'm just going to tell you no one's safe no one's safe in 2019 this song especially in that portion of the song if if the f the floodgates don't open then i have no idea what's going on but that is an insane breakdown it's like that one meme where it's like uh play the riff but slower and this is does it a justice uh tenfold 100 fold 1000 fold 100,000 fold uh phenomenal ending to a track dear god is it is mental and is again one that i highly 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 recommend checking out so we're gonna move into track number nine which is devil cry this is another favorite of mine if you're noticing a trend um i think that upon first listen I didn't really have the chance to appreciate it just because I felt Hail to the Fire was just, no pun intended, a real fire track. But um, just because I, I feel like it was just a hard track to follow. But as I've gone and listened to it many, many, many times, I'd say probably in the 20 to 30 time range, um, this one gets better and better. And I think it's one of my favorites uh, just because of the electronic flares uh, in the song that I feel like they have been incorporating throughout the entire record. Um, I think that they have some of the best moments of that in this track, uh, more specifically at the one minutes and 33 second mark to around the one minutes and 45 second mark. Uh, and then conversely at two minutes and 46 seconds to around the three minutes and three minute mark. Um, they really do. A great job of you know not only feeling like the electronics should be there but that they work with the song and that um, the structure of the song and the structure and an integrity of the song really works um, this one's a fast and gritty one but I think that uh, one cool another cool part of the track is the bridge it has this awesome kind of space to it uh, that again was kind of unexpected uh, considering that the track that preceded it was very just in your face and aggressive so definitely give devil cry a listen uh, if you're interested as well so we're gonna move into track number 10 which is just confusing and I think that this that pretty much sums up this track in general um, I think it is a unique track uh, I, I feel like it is a track that I would have heard a band like Siler do or something like that. I would have never expected uh, Crystal Lake to do something like that. I know that they have a little bit of rap influence here and there. You can hear in some of uh, Rio's kind of like vocalizing in certain tracks. Um, but I didn't think they would actually do one where it feels very much um, along the lines of, I wouldn't say like a rap track, but it has a unique quality to it. Um, 
I think instrumentally, um, it's something that's very appealing to me. Um, I do like the sort of concept behind it, um, but it's just something that just didn't resonate with me. Uh, it's definitely the black sheep of the record. It's one that I feel like either people love it or people will hate it. Um, I don't know if anybody is kind of like in the middle of it. Um, but overall, I think it's a decent track. It's just not, it just doesn't happen to be one of my favorites. So we're going to move into track number 11, which is Apollo. This is technically the first single that they had released before they announced the record. They released a music video for it. Um, and this one's really cool. If you haven't checked out the music video, definitely go do that. But um, I feel like this one kind of bridges the gap between True North and their newest record, this one, Helix, um, because it kind of brings elements of both, uh, but also kind of again keeping with the sort of heavier tonalities of the record um rio is kind of doing uh, a similar thing to what sam carter does of architects with his screams he kind of almost has his vocalized approach to it or singing quality uh to his screams which you can definitely hear uh in portions of the choruses uh throughout the record um and then at the end of the song or pretty much closer to the end of the song there's a really fantastic breakdown at around the two minutes and 40 second mark Mark, to around the three minutes and two second mark uh that i think is absolutely fabulous uh a great another great track uh that is currently out that you can go listen to so go check out apollo so we're gonna move in the last track track number 12 which is sanctuary this one's one of my favorites as well uh as you're noticing a trend a little bit again um but i appreciate the mo melodic nature of this track and i think i really enjoyed it uh, there's some cleanish sort of vocals um, throughout the track, um, and there's this neat electronic layering uh, sprinkled throughout the song. Uh, I also feel like this kind of combines a lot of the sort of ethereal qualities of Helix, but also a lot of the heavier tonalities um, of uh, of some of, some of the songs off the record, and really kind of you know make a, an amalgamation of those two things in one song um and i think they do it in a unique way that doesn't seem overplayed or doesn't seem like you know they kind of copped out in the track um i think it is a great way to end off the record uh and again another fantastic song off of helix so we're gonna go through some pros and cons uh one of my biggest pro off the record i think is the screaming if you don't come for this record for the screaming um i think you're really sorely missing out because I feel like, again, as I had mentioned before, I feel like Rio is definitely one of the best up-and-coming screamers in our genre currently. Um, and if you aren't doing your homework, please, I highly, highly recommend doing so. Um, but this band kind of encompasses what a great heavy band should do but also has that sort of melodic and technicality and has a great groove uh mixed throughout this record i think this is their best foot forward um i like true north a lot i love the sign i love cubes but i feel like this is the ultimate crystal lake i feel like they obviously are putting their best foot forward and it is one that i feel like a lot of you will enjoy um besides uh, being heavy and being great melodic wise I feel like there was also some really great features I think uh, Gideon's vocalist Dan and Tyler did a phenomenal job I think AJ did a really great job on the, on the features that they had I think they utilized them very well and I think that they obviously worked with the songs that were uh, chosen for them uh, I have one big con I feel like just confusing is just obviously just confusing uh i think it's a cool concept i just feel like it wasn't executed properly um they could do a song like that and i think it would work uh but i think it just needs a little bit more je ne sais quoi i think it just needs a little bit extra uh and it would have been a really fantastic track that um i feel like would have been really close to giving me a perfect score uh, on this record. But overall, I think if you're a fan of really heavy music, um, this is not a record to sleep on. Um, one of my favorites of this year. So my overall rating for Crystal Lakes Helix, I'm going to be giving it a 9.8 out of 10. Uh, definitely give this one a listen. Uh, I have not recommended a band enough, and this one is definitely one that I will definitely try to recommend all week, but also just to listen to in general. Even if it's not this record, listen to True North, listen to this sign. I feel like this band had some really great stuff back then, and I think this record is just the culmination of all the great things that they they have done so far. So 
go give this one a listen. Uh, if you have already checked it out or if you're excited uh, of the tracks on the record, let me know in the comments if you're going to be cool and you live in the U.S. and you want to listen to it uh, when it comes out. Definitely let me know. Drop a comment. I'd love to know what you guys think about the record, what you think about Crystal Lake. If you saw them uh, on their first U.S. tour, I'd love to hear what you guys think about them um, and what they're going to be doing next uh, as well. So if you enjoyed this review, make sure to subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. It goes a long way. Thank you guys for all the support all the love it means a lot um i know that i say in every video but it genuinely means a lot and to everybody that just you know says that i'm doing a great job and that i'm continuing doing this i i've been doing this for three years now this month and it's really cool to just see the progress and and you know the things that i've been able to accomplish over these three years so um thank you so much for that um, also, if you want to see like more live content, let me know. Uh, things are changing with my work schedule, so I might be able to do those more frequently. Uh, so definitely be on the lookout for those. But uh, keep up on our social media for all those sorts of things. I try to post as frequently as I can on those two as well. So uh, definitely check the links in the description for those uh, if you'd like to follow. And um, thank you guys for watching this. My name is Brandon. We hope you got your fix, and we'll be talking with you soon. Peace. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, of course. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, make sure to go check out the other series we do. We do album reviews, we do band interviews, and we do live videos, so definitely go check that out. Um, hit that subscribe button, it really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media, that's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us guys talk to you later deuces